Hello and welcome back to the channel guys, I hope you're well. Today I thought it would be great to see if I could create an eco-friendly photography vlog using only the power of my feet, the sun and this, the Jackery Explorer 1000 solar generator. So firstly, big thanks to Jackery for sending out this bundle. It's going to be a big help with creating my photography vlogs when I'm out in the wilderness without any power. So first I'm going to share a little info about the Jackery's portable power station and why it solves three major problems for me. And then we'll walk out to a coastal location to hopefully shoot some landscape photography. All of my camera gear, my drone batteries, my coffee and power for editing and uploading this video will be produced using the sun's energy. So yeah, a really nice eco-friendly vlog today. So let's dive straight into it. Jackery was founded in 2012 by a group of adventurous engineers who believe in making electricity portable, clean and accessible. A solar generator can technically refer to a solar solution that combines a portable power station with solar panels. It converts the sun's energy captured by the solar panels into electrical power and then stores it in a portable power station for later use. Jackery's solar generator is a bundle consisting of the Explorer portable power station and two Solar Saga solar panels, providing an outstanding and efficient source of on-the-go power when out and about on your favourite outdoor adventure. So I think it's fair to say I don't know a huge amount about electrics, but what Jackery has done here has made it super simple for people like me. Essentially, it's just a plug and play system. So plug your stuff in, and it's gonna work. So as you can see, we've got the Explorer 1000 here and essentially that allows us to output a thousand watts. So we can uh, quite easily power all of my camera gear here and uh, have no problems whatsoever. We can also plug in a kettle providing it's rated below a thousand watts. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, plug in my drone first into the AC power outlet here. Just press the button on the top there. It's gonna tell us on the display here what power that's drawing out of the Explorer. So yeah, it's uh, currently it's 49 watts, so that's the controller and the battery pack there. But as you can see behind the unit, we've got this solar panel here, and this actually comes with two panels. I'm just gonna plug this one in for now. So as you can see, the, the power outlet is connected to the back of it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug that in. And in the display here, we've got the input as well as the output. So we can see what power we're putting back into the jackery as it's charging so that's uh, currently at 45 watts so we're putting 45 watts of power into it and it's drawing actually now 54 watts coming out so we're not far off uh, keeping at it at its at its power uh, storage capacity here so that's that's pretty cool so in terms of the sockets on the front here we've got these two ac power supply sockets here which you can plug at any household uh, appliance into providing it's rated at 1000 watts or less and then on this side we've got our DC outlet so we've got a USB-C we've got our 5 volt standard USB and a quick charging 3.0 USB we've also got a 12 volt uh, car style charger cigarette lighter plug-in socket there so this is the other panel here on the back of it we've got these flaps that fold out that one i've got positioned against the wall but these have got these flaps that just fold out which allow you to stand it up if you haven't got anything to lean it up against on the back here it's got the cable in there for charging you can also plug usb straight into this um, outlet here on the back so you know should you wish just to plug something directly into that you could do I should say build quality wise everything's absolutely fantastic it's all really easy to use simple layouts just yeah self-explanatory really so let's get a coffee on and uh, see what it does to the, to the power let's grind a few beans up plug that bad boy in got to have a coffee when you're shooting landscapes let's get this one plugged in now we're drawing 820 watts of power out of the Explorer, which is just below its limit, I guess. So that is the coffee done. We're all set to go now. So I've got a four mile walk ahead of me. Now I, uh, I'm trying to keep this eco-friendly, so I'm not using my vehicle today. I'm leaving that here. So I'll be heading out on foot across the field, through some woodland and down to a secluded cove that requires a bit of an abseil to get down to. So that'll be fun. And then hopefully we'll be able to capture some wonderful landscape photos this evening. So yeah get all my gear packed up 
and I'll get my laptop on charge as well. So when I come back, I can get stuck into the editing. Without further ado, let's get the walking boots on and get cracking with this hike. That was a long four miles, I tell you. Whew, I'm ready for a break, but we're not too far away from the secret cove, uh, which uh, I'm gonna be shooting at tonight. But yeah, there's three reasons actually why I think the Jackery Explorer 1000 is gonna be great for me personally as a photographer. I think the first one, obviously creating these videos. I'm often out in the wilderness with obviously out any power. So to be able to charge my batteries on the go, and my drone batteries is gonna be really valuable. I could plug, the Jackery Explorer into my car 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter and it will charge up as I drive around to different locations so that's going to be fantastic as well. Obviously when I'm out for multiple days maybe I'm doing car camping or a bit of wild camping or something I can get my uh, stuff charged up in the car overnight and ready for the next day so that that's going to be really valuable. Secondly actually shoot a lot of weddings uh, video and uh, photo and one of the biggest problems for me is keeping my gear charged especially especially when I'm doing uh, weddings like back-to-back -back weddings like last year in 2021 I did three back-to-back uh, -back marquee weddings and it was really difficult to keep things charged when you're doing a marquee wedding there's no power generally it's all run off a generator so finding a power outlet is quite tricky which means then you've got to spend going through the night charging your gear up and it's not ideal so to be able to just go back to the car and pop a battery on charge when it runs dead is definitely going to be a valuable oop, asset to have for sure but thirdly as well I think more for family uh, expeditions family camping trips it's going to be really good so I'm often out with the family during the summer you know for a week or so doing camping trips and to be able to run a fridge kettle and a toaster that's going to be pretty cool make things a little bit easier so yeah three really valuable uh, uses I think for me personally not too much further now I think just up this little trail here is going to be my first location before we head down this little trail here to the left that unless you went down you'd never know about it's uh, one of them it's a hidden gem so let's wander up here and take a look at my first composition something I've been thinking about more and that's trying to incorporate my woodland photography with my seascape photography try, try to merge the two genre, genres of photography together so incorporating the woodland alongside the sea so this particular shot here I've got these silver birches which are covered in lichens and mosses and they're all gnarly and twisted which is a little bit unusual for silver birch to be honest normally the branches are quite straight but obviously where they're positioned on the side of this cliff it's made them that way and, that, and that's really pleasing I think and a little bit something different. But what we've got here is we're looking down into this cove and we've got these wonderful rock formations beyond which are striking in terms of colour. There's lots of different colours in there, some oranges, some greens, some purples, some blues. It's fantastic. And we've got this lovely little strip of sand which uh, offers a little bit of a curved detail. Uh, to the middle of the image and then we've got this pristine blue sea washing into the image and essentially what we're doing is looking through these twisted birches down into the cove so it's almost like it feels to me like almost like an abstract kind of shot lots of different colors we're peering down to uh, to the bottom there and what I'm doing I'm focusing on the trees and not actually the cove so it's about the trees and I'm choosing my depth of field very very carefully I'm shooting that f8 and that's allowed me to get the trees nice and sharp but the background just ever so slightly out of focus and what that does is adds a little bit of depth to the image it shows that you know there's quite a bit of distance between these trees and the cove so it really accentuates the fact that we're looking down into the image and i think that works for this particular scene here i'm not really blurring out the background i'm just making it a touch softer than the trees just to like i said accentuate the depth this image is all about colour, 
vibrancy and just something a bit different. It feels different to me. And it's something I'm really interested in looking into in more detail as I visit these wonderful coastal locations. So I feel it's a bit of a hybrid shop, part woodland, part seascape. So yeah, pretty cool. Well, the lights like it is right now, focus on the trees. Put my two second timer on as always, just to make sure I've got no camera shake. And go ahead, grab this image, and then wander down to this awesome cave, or should I say, abseil down. Right, see you down there. Actually, I didn't know there was waterfall down here, so that was a nice surprise. And actually, although there's not a huge amount of water coming down it, so I don't think it will make a, a dramatic waterfall shot as such. I do think maybe there's some intimate details that I can pick out here uh, against this wonderful cliff face and also these wonderful rounded stones that we've got along the shoreline here. So I think that might work quite well. I'm going to do a little bit of experimentation and uh, I'll put the images up on the screen but I don't want to dwell again here too long because I want to make my way along the coast before the tide comes in and blocks off my route across to the main part of the beach. So grab a couple of shots, intimate shots of this and then move on. So I'm trying to keep the shot really simple actually and just hone in on just one particular part of the waterfall. What I found is this initially this black rock that juts out in front is obviously very very dark. It's black. It's you know very very wet. It's got some mosses on it and different plants on it as well, which is quite nice. And the water's twisting as it comes down the fall itself, which is pretty pleasing to the eye. But beyond that, we've got this striking orange rock, which is quite unusual. So there's a little bit of depth to the image, a little bit of colour. So yeah, very intimate shot something that may or may not work as always when you're testing and you know playing around with shots like this but yeah quite interesting I actually quite like it on the camera very simple really I've got the three stop filter on which is just slow, slowing my shutter speed down to two seconds and I'm at f16 as well which gets the uh, foreground and the background pretty much both sharp so uh, I've zoomed in quite far, actually I'm about 130 mil. so even though there's only about 3 metres between the foreground and the background, if I don't shoot at f16, the background's quite out of focus, which is obviously, well, for this shot, not going to work, but yeah. They're my initial thoughts, so I'm going to grab this image quickly and then see if I can focus on something down at the base of the waterfall. Maybe some of these boulders. And I'll put both images up for you to take a look at, then we'll See if we can get down this coast a little bit.
I almost forgot about the coffee guys. Hey, what do you reckon? So, I got a little bit carried away actually with the waterfall and then sending the drone up that my route around to the cove there has actually been cut off by the tide. So I slipped up a little bit there. To be honest, uh, I didn't realise what the time was. But nonetheless, we're going to make the best of it. And this cove is wonderful anyway, this little area here. All these sweeping lines, these boulders here and plenty of foreground interest. And the sky looks like it could be absolutely epic. I'll probably put the curse on that one already, but it's got good potential anyway. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to use the wide lens, try to incorporate plenty of foreground, and hopefully the sky's going to light up and we'll just get something uh, pretty cool for sunset. The issue I have with this particular beach is we've got this cliff here, which blocks out a lot of the light already, about an hour before, well, 45 minutes before the sun actually dips down behind the horizon line this complete area here is cut off with light so there's no light on my foreground so I'm really hoping that I can get some nice reflected light from the clouds coming back down and hitting these rocks here. Now compositionally I feel I'm probably going to have to move uh, probably back as the tide comes in so it's kind of pointless to me talking you through a composition right now. I'm just going to play around see if I can get set up Maybe give me myself a few ideas when I need to move back as the, as the tide comes in and just wait it out and see what happens with the clouds. So, yeah, at this moment in time, I don't really know what I'm going to shoot, but I am definitely going to shoot something. Oh, that's nice, that's nice. So, I think I've got everything set up. The reason why I'm giggling to myself is trying to shoot video and do a seascape at either sunrise or sunset, especially when you, the tide is coming in, is particularly difficult. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder why I don't just get the shot and then talk through it, but I really want to get this across in a live scenario. and I think it makes a much more engaging video, but it's much more difficult to film. So forgive me if I waffle on a little bit, but I've tried to sort my composition out further up the beach. Initially, I wanted to be right close to the water, but every time I got the set up, I tried to get the camera set up to talk through what I was going to do. Obviously, I've had to move back. So I decided on coming right back up the beach, probably a metre higher than the current water level to give myself enough time to be able to shoot this and explain what I'm doing. So I've got these wonderful sweeping rock formations, these slabs that have upended themselves ever so slightly and facing more of a diagonal angle down towards the sea. The cliffs on the left hand side I've tried to balance with this big rock on the right hand side, this big boulder here. So we've got a bit of balance either side of the scene because I feel if there's just cliffs on the left it feels a little bit sort of lopsided and I wanted to try to make sure it felt a little bit more balanced essentially. So there's a few boulders dotted around and we've got some water coming down from the from the waterfall back here as well so everything draws the eye down towards the sea so because there's a lot going on in terms of texture and detail in the sky at the moment i've opted to smooth the water out just to bring in a little bit more tranquility to the image otherwise it feels a little bit too chaotic if you like so that's what i'm going for polarizers on as well at the minute I've got a five second exposure at f11. Obviously that's going to increase as the light fades. But uh, yeah, I'm going to take a shot now. So I've taken a couple already. I'm going to take another one now. I'm focused a third of the way into the scene on these boulders down here in the foreground. And it really is just about getting the best cloud detail. Clouds are starting to get some colour with them as well now, which is really what I'm looking for. It's just about timing isn't it? It's about the tide being in the right level, the clouds being in the right place and the light hitting the clouds and uh, bringing out the vibrancy and colour in the clouds as well. So, so many different elements. I've probably got another 10 or 15 minutes maybe here before I start to lose my foreground to the sea. So, I will show you the best one from the selection of images I take over the course of the next 10 minutes or so. And yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this week's video guys. Big thanks to Jackery for supporting this week's content and obviously helping us out in the future as well with power solutions. 
and uh, yeah I'll look forward to seeing you again next week so take care uh, if you like the video please be sure to give it a thumbs up like subscribe and all that good stuff and I will see you again very soon